What is up, YouTubers and lovers of budget cars and bikes? Welcome to the first motorcycle review for 2021. It feels like it's been so long, I have to tell you. I don't think I've done a review on a bike since the Ducati, maybe. And that was, it's got to be getting on for six months since I actually did that review and did this review. Obviously, the way you see things on YouTube is slightly different because there's often a few videos backed up. But anyway, it is a glorious April day, just coming up towards the end of April now down in here in Cornwall. And uh, the restrictions have eased a bit, so I'm out on this bad girl. It is a bit of a revisit. If you've seen the original video I did on this on a 2000, I think it was, XJR 1300 by Yamaha. I never actually really liked that video. Um, the video quality wasn't great. It cut off right towards the end because the battery ran out and I didn't really get a chance to give you my real impressions of that bike apart from the negatives. Um, so I, this came up. I mean, it wasn't local. I used a company called Shipley, which I know a lot of us use to ship this down from Northamptonshire, I think it was, somewhere out there. It ended up being 165 quid to ship it down to Cornwall. 45 quid of that, bear in mind, was actually the Shipley fee. So the company actually did it for 120 quid, which I thought was stunning value um, very very professional as well and I've got their number so if I need anything else moving next time it'll be 120 quid won't it of course now this uh, we'll talk about prices in a minute and then I'll, you know we'll talk about the bike first this is a 2007 so it's actually seven years older than the one I did previously the SP the red and black one um, and in this stunning what I would call the limited edition stripe because that's what Ducati call theirs every time they put a stripe on it they call it the stripe edition so I've kind of called this uh, the same kind of thing Thing, even though it's got two stripes this uh, you may notice uh, this straight away it's not supposed to be here the previous owner put it on because there was a little mark just underneath there uh, I think it actually suits the bike it is a stunning color this cobalt blue with the white stripes I really, really like it. It's obviously been very, very well looked after all its life. It's done 19,957 miles, something like that, just under 20,000 miles. And it's got full dealer service history up until about 18,500 miles. Um, this is one of the reasons I bought it. I mean, if you look at this, the downpipes, the places where these kind of old retro muscle bikes tend to go, it hasn't. You know, the uh, downpipes are all pretty much pristine. All around the engine knuckles, as I would call them, these bits here. Oop, there we go. Uh, that's all cleaned up. Whether that's been cleaned properly or whether it's just been stored really well, I don't know. But the engine case is all brilliant. Original exhaust there in amazing condition, considering this is a 14-year-old bike. Um, original indicators. Now, I did learn my lesson because, again, if you look at the uh, the SP one I did on this, I, <laughs> I chopped off a bit of the number plate to make it look cooler. And I uh, tinted the lenses on the indicators. Never do that again. I mean, I, I would never do that kind of crap again. Now, this has got O-Lens as well, even though it's not the SP it does have Olins and as you can see they are in extraordinary condition almost as new in fact pretty much every panel on this bike is as new it is just a stunning bit of kit as we look up here now while I'm stood here I will tell you one gripe that I've noticed because I've, it's been annoying me for the last half an hour these little indicator lights behind here for the gear, uh, gear position I see neutral light uh, the high beam the indicator is so bloody hard to see where in daylight because they've got this kind of almost like a black film across it, as you can see. I mean, even if I turn these on, you can just about see the engine light and you can just about see the indicator flashing and the neutral light. Now, when you're up here and you've got the sun behind you, you can't see anything. So I'm constantly basically having to remember to turn off my indicator because I can't see it physically in front of me as I would do normally on a bike. It's flashing, you see it, you turn it off. I can't bloody see it. So that's a little bit of an annoyance. Now, if we're going to talk about annoyances, you may again remember that when I did the original SP version of this, I was complaining about the hideous vibration um, on that particular model. This doesn't seem to have that. There was a lot of comments in that video, the original one, about how maybe the gearing was slightly different. Maybe there, there was a tooth off the, one of the cogs in the gearing. Um, all sorts of opinions on why that should be. This isn't anywhere near as bad, although you do get a fair amount, around about 4,000 revs, you get a fair amount through those foot pegs there. That could be that I'm wearing just these uh, kind of like Timberland type boots here. Um, if I was in a proper pair of boots or if maybe an insole into these boots, that would probably probably ease that off a little bit hardly any through the handlebars although I would always recommend putting a set of grip puppies on here because it just makes things far smoother not so much through the seat um, again if this was going to be my forever bike I would consider getting a gel seat or getting a gel insert put into the rider part of that just for extra comfort you know because I'm an old man and I like my comfort in that respect 
When I first bought this, I didn't like the blue stripes on the wheels. Um, I was going to change that for white because I do think that white may actually suit it better. But I've seen quite a lot of this colour scheme with the blue, so I don't know if it came from the factory with that or whether everybody's just doing it that way. Um, so I'm going to leave it. Um, and in all honesty, I'll let you into a secret. I'm not going to keep this bike, um, even though it is a stunning bit of kit and I've enjoyed every second of owning it, even though I've only had it four months. I'm going to get rid of it because I do prefer, as you may know if you've uh, been on my channel for a while, I do prefer my triples and my uh, two-stroke, uh, two-strokes, V-twins rather. Well, they were two-stroke. Now, that's an interesting concept. Maybe I'll get an old RD350 LC, I wish. Anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, I prefer my V-twins and my triples. So, you know, if I'm going to get a bike, a, a keeper, as it were, in that respect, uh, I would probably opt for an Italian or a Triumph or maybe something, because I'm of that age now, I'm considering... A Harley. Um, don't laugh. I'm considering getting one because, again, this channel is all about trying things you haven't tried before you die, you know, budget bucket list and all that. Um, although Harleys aren't exactly budget, are they? Um, and the only one I really like is the Breakout, and that's well over 10 grand. Don't have that kind of money. Uh, I do like the Fat Bob and the Fat Boy. Uh, I think would be perfect for me. Sports is too small. Um, but again, you know, it's something for the future, perhaps. And I've looked at the um, Triumph Explorer as well, the 1215, as an option, you know, because it's got a nice triple engine. But I would like to, and I've been saying it for the last two years, I would like to try out the Ducati Multistrada 1200S. I really want to have a go on one of them, but they never seem to come together, those deals. I've almost put a deal together three times now, and it just fell through at the last minute. For whatever reason... Um, but I'm still looking, and I would actually quite like, if you ever saw my video of the Ducati Monster 1200 I had, uh, I'll stick the link up up in the corner, right-hand corner somewhere. Um, if you ever saw the video I did on that, uh, I do really like that bike, and I do miss it, and I would have another one in a fucking heartbeat. It's such an amazing all-round bike that, that I would love to get another one. Uh, that wasn't the S or the R, so if I did get another one, I'd think I'd want the S just to make it a little bit different. And the prices have tumbled on those, so, you know, they were in, uh, in within my price range again. Anyway, back to this big girl, the XJR 1300. As I said, 2007, 20,000 miles, thereabouts. Three or four owners, full-service history, stunning, 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 beautiful bike. This won't be a long kind of review because, as I said, I've already done the review on the SP version. This is just to let you know what I'm up to and to see what you can get for your money. Now, money, let's have a talk about that. When I bought that SP, the red and black one, the original one, I did, I'm just going to have a little walk around here, guys. When I bought that, I bought that for a grand total of £2,000. Absolute bargain, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, as I said, that was a 2000 with I think it was about 22,000 miles on it, which again, low mileage. But two grand for that was the bargain of a lifetime. Um, I don't recall what I sold that for, but I didn't lose any money, that's for sure. This one, and most ones of this kind of age, tend to go for around about four grand. Uh, so you do the math, you know, would you rather have a two grand one, uh, which is seven years older, or pay double and have one that's seven years newer? And to be honest, I very much doubt if you'd buy a 2000 um, for 2000 anymore, because they seem to have crept up the prices. As with a lot of retro bikes, the prices do tend to creep up after a while. Um, the GSX 1400 is a prime example of that. The, the prices on that, I mean, I can see them getting close to 10 grand, you know, in the next couple of years. I really wish I'd kept my blue and white one. Again, if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link up in the top corner here somewhere for the GSX 1400 I had. Kind of wish I'd kept that um, because I loved that colour. And that's one of the reasons I bought this because I love this colour as well. Now, this one, I paid a princely sum of £2,900, which I think is a bloody bargain. But bear in mind, that was over Christmas. So, you know, and I had to get it shipped down so in total it owes me just over three grand i think three thousand and fifty quid something like that i think this is a four grand bike all day long um, at a dealer's i obviously i'm not a dealer so i won't get that kind of money but i think if you were buying this privately with this kind of miles in this kind of condition and i'd be bloody surprised if you can get one in this kind of condition to be honest because of that the low mileage in the condition i think privately three seven something like that three eight maybe um, would be a fair price i mean you may pay more on a dealer to be honest because now as i said we're in april and prices are starting to creep up by may june you're probably looking four grand plus for this from a dealer just because as i said it is in extraordinary condition there's no corrosion anywhere there's a tiny bit on a couple of the um brake disc bolts there two minute job to get rid of that um this little 
pinky stuff you can see there is just the remnants of the ACF 50 that I put on it over the winter, which I highly recommend, by the way. Um, so that's it, basically. This is a kind of a recap on the XJR 1300, not necessarily a, re a review per se, because I've already done a review, but I just wanted to see, uh, show you guys, rather, what I've been up to, finally get a bike back on the channel after so many months of just doing cars and broken cars and salvage cars and crappy cars. <laughs> we won't talk about the Astra. Um, but if you haven't subscribed, you like this kind of video content, then do consider subscribing. Uh, give the video a thumbs up if you would, that always helps. And if you've got any kind of comments at all, just drop it in the comments section. I mean, do you think I overpaid for this? Do you think the values I've got are about right? What do you think of yours? I mean, you know, if you've got one of these, do you get uh, any kind of vibration through the foot pegs down there? Um, it, is that just my footwear, do you think? You know, as I said, comments are most, most welcome. And uh, again, as I said, if you haven't subscribed, then consider doing that. Uh, because we get a video out every three or four weeks and I will try to do more bikes. Um, if you look back through my catalog of videos, you'll see there's a lot of bikes in there. It's just the last few months that um, I've just not been able to find anything I like. Hence, when this came along, I jumped on it. And I think you'll agree, you know, even the swing arm, everything about this bike is just stunning. I've been very, very lucky, I think, in this. And I've got a horrible feeling, if I'm honest, that when I sell this, which you know me, guys, I probably will. I got a horrible feeling that when I sell this, I'm going to regret it because I regretted selling the GSX 1400 within about <laughs> 10 minutes of, of doing it because I couldn't buy another GSX 1400 uh, like the one I sold for the money I sold it for. There's no way. They're four and a half to five grand will get you an average one. You know, you're looking at 10 grand for a, a showroom condition one or close to. I mean, I've seen them up for eight plus. So in the next couple of years, it's going to be 10 grand, I reckon, for one of them. And if somebody buys this and keeps it in a garage and keeps it serviced and just does a thousand miles a year and treats it like a baby, this is going to just go up in value, I think. I mean, you'll look back at this and think four grand for that my god now they're seven kind of thing you know this is only going one way i think price wise and that's up just like the honda cb 1300 and just like the zrx 1200 the uh, eddie lawson not replica uh, they're all creeping up i mean those zrx's again i did a video on a zrx 1200 i'll stick a link up here um they're creeping up again now they're, they're sort of six grand pluses and i bought mine for two and a half grand and sold it for Two seven, I think, something like that. You know, I wish I could buy back all those bikes for the price I bought them from then, and then I'd make another five ten grand. Anyway, I digress again. This is, as I said, the 2007 XJR 1300 with just under 20,000 miles, and I think you'll agree it's a stunner. It is just beautiful. Every angle, it rides beautifully. We won't talk about miles per gallon because you don't buy a 1300cc motorcycle and then worry about how many miles per gallon you're getting, do you? I mean, that's just silly. Anyway, um, that's it for this one. Um, I'm hoping to get another bike if this one goes. We'll see what that is. As I said, I'm looking more towards uh, V-Twins and Triumphs. I think, from my point of view there's only maybe less than half a dozen bikes that i've still to try that uh, interests me because i've tried a lot of bikes now uh, the monster being one which i've already had the multistrada which i desperately want to have a harley because i've never had one and the least i can say i've had one um i would love to have a go on the 1100 v4 but what's the point in me an old geezer having 175 horsepower i'll never use it you know it's just pointless but i'd love to have a go on one and if one came up cheap enough i'd definitely buy it um as long as i can get my money back on it uh, the R9 T BMW, I've spoken about that a few times as well. Love to have a go on one of them, but I've got a feeling it'll be just like the BMW, BMW the Triumph T120 Black. It might just be a little bit too small for me. I like my bikes like this, big and beefy and manly and grr. Anyway, that's it. As I said, subscribe if you haven't and give the video a thumbs up. Comments below, please. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care.